Okay, so here are what the four different shape types look like. Ooh, and I just realized that there is a typo here. Zero, one, two, and this should be a three. So our S type orbitals, which is when we give L our value of zero, is essentially in the shape of a sphere. Okay, so basically it kind of just looks like a, a sphere, right? It's just a ball. Um, our L is equal to one is a P type orbital. So sometimes I refer to them just kind of a way, it's not like the official name of it. But the official name is P type, um, but it kind of looks like a peanut. So it's a two lobed structure. So this, even though this looks like it is two different orbitals, it's not. This entire thing is one orbital. Okay, it just has two different sides to it or two different lobes. When L is equal to two, we have a D type orbital. And again, not an official name, but to help you remember. So D is kind of looking like the shape of a daisy. It is a four lobed structure. So it's one, two. So basically it looks like it has four different lobes to it. So kind of like, I guess, petals on a flower or D for daisy, okay? Uh, so for L is equal to three, the F type orbital is actually much more complex. It has seven different lobes, okay? So it gets more and more complex as you obviously go higher and higher in terms of energy levels. You have more of these different sub-level groups. Now, in terms of which ones are you expected to know, okay? So you're expected to know all of these. Like you should know what the letter represents. But in terms of drawings, okay, we were in grade 12 at least, right? We will only be drawing out S's and P orbitals. So the D and F, you should know what they are, like what they represent, but you will not be expected to draw those out. So later on in this chapter and in this unit and in this course, actually, we will be looking at S and P further, um, but drawing wise, you're not expected for the D and F. Okay, so that goes back to, so let's go back to what we originally had, right? So right now we have looked at N, so we've done N, we've done L. So N tells us the energy level, L tells us the shape that the orbital is, right? So the L possibilities are really 0, 1, 2, or 3, and the L depends on the N. So each number here actually, like the next one we're going to look at will depend on what L we are discussing. So we've done L, we've done N. So let's continue on. So the third quantum number is sometimes referred to as the magnetic quantum number. And the symbol to represent that is an M with a subscript of our cursive L. Now what this value tells us is the orientation of the orbitals. Okay, so the best way for me to explain this to you is to give you uh, an example, okay? So let's say here I have my, this is just showing you the 3D space, right? So I have like X, Y, uh, Z here. So let's talk about our P orbitals. So remember the P orbitals are that peanut shape. Well, actually we have three different orientations that that peanut can take on. I'll use different colors. So one orientation is we can have a peanut going along the Y axis. Or the peanut can run along the x axis, or the peanut can run along the z axis. Like there are three different orientations that can exist when we're talking about p type orbitals. So, what this letter will essentially, what this number will tell us is basically, well, which one of those peanuts are we discussing? Are we looking at the one that's on the X, on the Y, or along the Z? So each number that we assign here is in reference to one of the orientations that that orbital type can exist in, okay? So some of them have multiple orientations, like for example, P can have three, but some of them actually don't have multiple orientations. So for example, our S type orbitals, which was our sphere, there's no other orientation that that can take on. It's simply in the middle, kind of just blobbed between all of our 
um, our axis points or our planes. So when you're describing the um, ML value, really it depends on what kind of interactions those electrons are having in terms of like 3D space. So in general, the different orientations want to be as far apart as possible. So you have to remember these little balloon-like shapes that I'm drawing here, they, those are those are essentially spaces where we're going to find electrons. So if we were to look here, we have our red, green, and blue peanut uh, shaped orbitals. Each one of those, remember each orbital can hold a max of two electrons. So electrons are repelling one another. So meaning the electrons that are in this Y orbital space are not going to want to interact with any of the other electrons. They are still repelling one another at that point in time. Okay, so what are the different orientations that are possible? Well, it depends on the L number that we are looking at, as I mentioned before. So for example, what you would do is you would take your L value and do positive L and negative L. Then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract one and do exactly the same thing, subtract two and do exactly the same thing until we hit zero, okay? So here's an example. When L is equal to one, there are three possibilities. You can have positive L, which is positive one, negative L, which is negative one, and then if we subtract one, we have zero. So you always have to have zero. So let me go through our list. So we have, let's do a running tally. So when n is equal to one, first energy level, L is equal to n minus one, which is zero. So our, L po our ML possibilities are really only zero. We can't do positive zero, negative zero, it's only zero. So that means there are a total of only one orientation here. Right? So. That means our spherical shaped, our S-type orbital, has only one orientation. Now let's look at the second energy level. L can be zero or L can be one. So that means we can have S or we can have P. So the ML for our S is still zero, but let's look at our ML. We can have positive L, negative L, and then we subtract one, which is zero. Right? So that means our L values have a total of, uh, sorry, our P shaped has a total of three orientations, which is exactly what we looked at here, X, Y, Z. So this is one orientation, this is another, this is another. So these numbers, when we say L can be negative one, zero, or positive one, each one of these is associated with a different orientation. It's like a code. The negative one ML will be a code for one of the orientations that are possible, okay? So at this level in grade 12, you are not expected to know what each number codes for, okay? But you should know what the possible numbers are and the fact that it does code for one of the orientations, right? So let's look at n is equal to three, just to give you another example. So we already know what, it, what happens when L is zero and when L is one. So let's look at when L is two. So this is our D type orbitals. Our ML value can be positive L, negative L, and then we're gonna subtract one. So we subtract one, now we have one. We can have positive one, negative one, and then we subtract one again. Or, if you want to think of it this way, it has all of the ML values of the shape before it plus positive negative L. So it has, the P was positive one, negative one, zero. The D has exactly the same thing, except it also has positive two and negative two. So that means in total, there are one, two, three, four, five different orientations for our D sublevel. So there are five different ways that that daisy shape can be orientated. So remember, each one of these codes for an orientation, but you're not expected to know the coding of that. 
You should know, however, the numbers that are possible and what those numbers represent, which is basically the orientations. And then, of course, let's take a look at when we have our F type. So 0 and 1 and 2, we already did. So let's look at when L is equal to 3. So this is our F type orbital. So our ML possibilities are positive 3, negative 3, and then we're going to subtract one. Positive 2, negative 2, and then we're going to subtract another one. Positive 1, negative 1, 0. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 orientation types when we're looking at that um, F type orbital. So again, you don't need to know all seven types, what they look like, but you need to know what numbers are possible and the fact that each one of these will code for an orientation. So let's take a look at the pictures. So here are our energy levels and the different shapes. So this is uh, L is equal to zero, right? So all of these are L is equal to zero because they're spherical in shape. What this is just showing you is that, remember we talked about how as the energy levels increase, the size of the orbitals will also increase. So imagine you have an energy level number two p orbital, an energy ne level number three p orbital will be larger. So all these orbital shapes get larger, the higher and higher up in energy that they are. Okay, so here we go, here's the note. Please note, ooh, ooh, please note, you are not responsible for knowing all the orientations, but you are responsible for knowing the general shape and the number of orientations that exist for each subshell, which is our shapes. All right, so here are our three types of P orbitals. Remember, there are three possibilities, plus one, negative one, and zero. Here are the D orbitals. Remember, when L is equal to two, we can have ML of plus 2, negative 2, plus 1, negative 1, 0. There are 5. So here they are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, you don't need to know these shapes. And then for our F orbital, there are 7. So remember, when L is equal to 3, our ML value is plus 3, negative 3, plus 2, negative 2, plus 1, negative 1, 0. So with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, you don't need to know, you're not drawing these, right? So remember the only ones you're ever drawing are these here, S's and P's. So don't worry about drawing these. You just have to be able to remember this and what they code for basically. Like not specifically, not that this is this shape. No, that's not what I mean. But you should know the number possibilities and what they basically, what information they give us. So here's a nice summary. So here's our S, P, D, and F shapes and all the different possible shapes that exist. And actually this particular picture right here actually shows you what the code is for. So when we have a negative one, it's referring to our X axis peanut. When we have zero, it's our Z and positive one is our Y. So the little subscript on each of these diagrams actually tells you what the matchup is for that particular ML value. Okay, lastly, the last quantum number uh, is called the electron spin or the fourth quantum number. So the uh, symbol to represent that is an M with a subscript S. So this is now in reference to, so up till now, our N L and ML values only refer to um, the orbital so far. We haven't talked about the electrons that are within the orbital. So this is really the only quantum number that is referencing the electron itself. So if you recall from the start of this lesson, the maximum number of electrons that can fit in an orbital is two. So two electrons max per orbital. So it doesn't matter what the shape of the orbital is, each one of these, so let's just pick this one for example, can hold a max of two. This max of two, maximum of two. Every single orbital, it does not matter the shape, it does not matter the type or the orientation, the maximum it can hold is two. So let's talk about what those electrons are doing inside that orbital.